And we are back in action, ready to build. It's crazy windy out. I know, it's gonna be a little challenging. It's just staring them down, like almost taunting them to come after them. But we wanna let people know the truth, the realities behind this type of building. It is not for the faint of heart. Oh, Shnikes. What's up, Green Studders? Glad you're back. Now, if you caught our last video, you know we had a ton of problems everywhere. Well, today I'm gonna fix those problems and we're gonna go back to course number seven and we are gonna to get it done. But first off, I gotta fix our gorilla cart. I gotta fix our pole compass, but the pole compass is extremely important. I think I got the fix. Shouldn't take too long on that one. So first things first, I'm gonna hit the gorilla cart. Now, I only needed one tire, but I actually picked up four tires. And that is because getting the right size tire for this was difficult at the store. These, I think, are 12 and a half inches, but I picked up four 10 inch wheels, and these are no flat wheels. So I wanna compare them, see if these might work. They were a pretty decent price. We might go down from a 12 and a half inch wheel to a 10 inch wheel. Uh, we'll see if it makes any difference. Now to just compare these tires and see how they look. See if we want to try them first. So clearly there is a significant size difference between the two tires. This is about 12 and a half inches. This is about 10 inches. But the width is about the same. But uh, we're going to try these out. 10 inch tires. Flat free. So hopefully these are a good investment. They're on sale. $20 each. We'll see how these work. Man, these tires are gonna look tiny. Uh, I'm not used to such tiny tires, but uh, they were way cheaper than the ones that were like, just they were maybe slightly larger than the ones we have on, 13 inches. And uh, those might've looked nicer, but uh, there was a huge price difference. So we're going with the tiny cheap tires. But hey, as long as it works, you know, that's all, that's all I'm concerned about. Luckily changing these tires, fairly easy to do. Of course, now that I said that, And that's it. Probably would help too if I change these tires when the cart wasn't full. <laughs> All right, now to test it out, let's see how these babies roll. I think it'll do what we want. <laughs> Maybe someday we'll spring for larger tires, but uh, I think they'll work. So among my acquisitions the other day, I got some bolts and some nuts. I got a couple of spares just in case something like this happens again. There we go. We're looking much better now and we are back in action, ready to build. Nice. Woo, how's it feel to be filling bags again? Seems like it's been a while. <laughs> it seems like it's been forever. You ready to knock out course number seven? She's already got another bag done. I wasn't even out here for her. She don't even need me. It's crazy windy out. I know, it's gonna be a little challenging. Is it blowing the bags around? Yeah, I think I have a technique oh. to help. Nice. And if you caught our last video, it seemed like so many things were against us. Some of these things were just little, like the bolt breaking, the tire on the car, the wind. Uh, that was a bit challenging. I mean, that one day you couldn't almost work at all. You had these freezing, blasting winds threatening them to push you off that wall. It was a challenge. We started building this course and then we had to stop. Finally, we were able to get it going. But I mean, that is just one of the big challenges of building with earth bags. Can I tell my crew story this from this morning? Sure. Oh man, you guys won't believe it. So I usually take crew out for his morning walk. This is probably like around six in the morning. So I'm taking him out. We're heading toward the main road. I wanna head east, but he's looking over toward the west. He's just straight staring over toward the west. I play into it a little bit. I'm like, okay, what's over there? So I'm looking, all of a sudden this coyote 
runs from one property across the road into another right through the barbed wire and crew sees this thing and he freaks out he wants to go running after it so i actually take him and we go running after this coyote just right up to the barbed wire fence but the coyote stops on the other side and it's just looking at him it's just staring him down like almost taunting him to come after him and crew wants to he wants to so bad he's chewing at the barbed wire he's going at the barbed wire he wants to get over there attack this coyote but i don't let him cross the barbed wire does his little angry poo sometimes when he sees things he gives a little angry poo but then we start heading back and then we saw a pack of coyotes not too far away from where we were there's a whole pack over there he wanted to go after them too i'm like no no sir i usually don't see coyotes that close but uh that was up close and personal and you said they were pretty decent sized ones too. they were pretty decent size that coyote we saw running across the road probably wasn't that much smaller than crew himself what do you think? Do you think that first coyote might have been trying to like lure crew over? I don't know. I've heard that happening with dogs before. Get lured away and then the pack attacks them. Wow. He yeah, would put I, up a pretty good fight though. He would put up a good fight. They'd probably regret having gone after that one. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's a good reason why we got to kind of keep him close by and we can't let him, you know, just do his own thing. Cause he would have went after that coyote for sure. He would have ran through that barbed wire and Got into some hot water. Okay, what were we gonna talk about? <laughs> <laughs> so Our we, house. <laughs> oh yeah, we got this. Uh, in case you haven't, in case you missed it, we got this little house build going on. Oh, look at that! Look at this precision work. Oh shit! Schnikes. <laughs> that is tight. But we've been out here for a few hours and I think we got a decent amount done. Had a lot to do today, but we are getting it done. Course number seven. Jess, how are you feeling? Good. It's coming along, huh? Not bad. Not bad. How's that compass looking? The compass looking okay now? Yeah, it looks okay. And the measurements are looking good? Yes. Everything's on the up and up, right? <laughs> yeah, look at this everyone. I'm bald. Just got, just gave me a haircut today. Thank you, Jess. You've been doing this for me for how long? How long you been cutting my hair now? I don't know, years. Years. Think of all that money we're saving. And uh, you know, I just, I decided, you know, I'm going bald. I'm losing my hair. Decided to just keep it short anyway. Makes it easier on you, right? Yeah, I was kind of fighting it for a while, but. But uh, now you realize how handsome I'm looking. I think it looks good. Yeah, yeah. And it's easy to do. So. <laughs> there you go. When you're losing your hair, it's easy to cut. <laughs> all right, I think we can get a few more bags done before we start lose all of our light, don't you think? Yeah. Just as long as someone keeps giving you dirt, eh? <laughs> I better get back to it. Who says I'm tired? You tired? You're a yawning boy. Now we just went out, did some chores, but we did a little splurging too, didn't we? I got some new footwear. Just got some new kicks. Check it out, y'all. So why'd you splurge on some new footwear? The boots that I've been wearing you know, they were awesome boots, protected my feet really well. You bet they were awesome. I bought them for you. <laughs> but they were really worn out. I've had them for a few years now, just like a bunch of holes in them, and they've, they're starting to get uncomfortable to wear. So I need something that I can work in safely out here and be comfortable too. So I got something new. Now I got, they're not quite comfortable yet. I gotta break them in, but. Oh, we're gonna break them in. And plus, they're lace up, so maybe that'll reduce the amount of dirt and rocks getting into your boots, right? That was the big thing about the other <laughs> boots. They're higher up, but you know, they're just slip on things and the, the opening was a little wide for my skinny legs <laughs> and always dirt and all kinds of stuff falling in there, and, which is not very comfortable. Oh, uh, skinny leg problems, skinny leg <laughs> problems. How many of you can relate? <laughs> I probably won't get sympathy for that. <laughs> Come on, she could get a little sympathy for skinny leg problems, right? Come on. 
All right, that's enough about your skinny legs and your new boots. You ready to fill some bags of dirt? Yep. All right. I'm already shoveling. I'm already getting the dirt prepared. All right, let's get it done. When you go through a plan like this in your mind, you don't realize all these little things that you have to deal with every day, like the, all the realities of it. You know, I mean, we knew it was going to be a challenge, but it's just a bunch of things that you got to deal with. And with any kind of house build, there's always going to be uh, these little challenges that come up and kind of hold you back, set you back. But uh, I think with this type of building, the challenge comes in with the intense physicality of it. This is like one of the biggest domes you can possibly make with uh, just using single bags like this. And it is, it is a lot of work. A lot of dirt that goes into moving just for one of these bags, but then all of these bags, it's crazy. And not only are we building the dome, but then the sort of buttress slash hallway, it's a lot of bags. It is. I don't want to sound like we're complaining about oh, it. I no. mean, we chose to do this and I think overall we enjoy doing this and building this. Yeah, don't get me wrong. We knew what we were getting into when we started this. We knew that this was going to be an intense physical project. And we've been building with earth bags now for almost a year. I think next month it'll be one solid year of uh, earth bag building. But we want to let people know the truth, the realities behind this type of building. It is not for the faint of heart. Yeah, because I mean, you can see people doing this kind of build and maybe see it on a video or something and it looks easy enough. But yeah, we just want to be real. <laughs> we want to We just want to let people know about... what you might be getting yourself into if you're thinking about this. Now, granted, we are just two people. We're two people, but we're determined to build this. I mean, we've done some pretty remarkable things already. The cistern, the two underground portions, and then the dome. I think it's pretty good for just a couple people to do. I think a project like this, normally you would see a team of people doing it. Five, six, ten people. Or, I mean, if you have more machinery to help you out, but we're working with just simple tools, so that makes for more physical work for us. We're taking on a lot, physically, because we kind of want to prove to ourselves, prove to other people that this kind of thing can be done, even with a couple of people. It may take time, it may take a lot of work, you may wake up with uh, some really sore muscles, but all in all, this can be done, it's not impossible. And we're not super athletes or anything like that. Speak for yourself. Okay. okay. <laughs> I feel like we're just kind of average people as far as physically. I mean, we're pretty able-bodied, but me, I'm like a little skinny waif, but uh, I'm doing it. Yeah, we're just two tiny, short people out in the desert building incredible things. You know, she says she's a tiny wave, but inside the spirit of a dragon. Ah, intense. So it does take a lot of determination to keep going because some days the weather can be harsh out here. The summers are very hot. The wind can be strong sometimes. The winters still get below freezing sometimes. You don't always want to be out there working but some days you got to push through it and some days you got to step back and regroup and got to figure some other things out how we're gonna do it exactly exactly it's just how life is <laughs> my big advice is do your research know what you have to do know what you're getting into and prepare yourself mentally because a lot of it's a mental game like you were saying be engaged mentally to be able to do this task and then physically as well it takes a little conditioning and you will build up conditioning yeah <laughs> building like this as well and you can't push yourself to the point that it's beyond what you can physically take that's not a good thing but like like she was saying it's so important you have to know when to push through some of those difficult times but also know when to step back and regroup and know that you're human and sometimes you will make mistakes if we can teach you anything, it's that <laughs> mistakes will happen. You just have to kind of roll with it and figure out ways around it and fix them. Always inspecting the work, huh?
<laughs> He's like, this'll do. Shady, soft. It's been at least an hour and he's still hanging out by the cistern, right, right behind the barbed wire. Like it over there, buddy? Huh? Like it over there? I think the tiny tires make it a little harder to navigate around this rocky terrain, but it's still functional. <laughs> I think I brought just here enough dirt to finish this bag, maybe start another one. But we're doing real good. We got maybe about a quarter of course number seven left. We're almost done. But I got to cut out right now. I got that video call with my mom, so I'm going to talk to her, see how she's doing. Then we're going to get right back and hit the rest of this build. Yeah. All right, we're heading toward the evening. We got maybe a couple hours worth of light. We got to get this done. I know a lot of people have been having some questions like when did the bag start stepping in? When does the dome start? And we kind of wanted to address that a little bit right here. Technically, it's already started, right? Yeah, it's not very visible right now, but that's because this isn't a perfect hemispherical dome. It's more pointed and the base of it goes in very gradually. It's hard to tell. That's purposeful because these are big, heavy bags. You don't want a more flat dome because that's too much weight. So we want it as stable as possible. It's gonna slope in gradually. We're gonna be explaining that in more detail coming up and you're gonna get to see it. So technically, we've already started stepping it in. It's just so gradual, you, you don't even notice. So all the bags are filled. Horse number seven's looking real good. I gotta do my thing, tamp it down nice and tight. Then we're 100% done with course number seven. Shall not pass. Treats in pocket. That's it. <laughs> oh, that's a good boy. Oh, what a good boy. You know, he almost killed you. <laughs> Look at how big this wall is getting. <laughs> yeah, what? We're at four feet from the outside ground and like three feet from the inside floor. But we need now to build this thing five times as high and then we're done. All right. Yeah! No problem. But I'm glad we're working on this together and we're working so closely on building this because we can really support each other when it is rough and encourage each other. And that helps us push through it too, I think. Yeah, honestly, we are both strong, determined individuals on our own but together we are stronger. We support each other and we work toward that common goal. Uh, one negative thing about us is that we both tend to dream big. <laughs> and we're not so good at recognizing our limitations. So that's why we're building massive domes and massive underground rooms and massive cisterns. We don't know. <laughs> Neither of us are like, Maybe we should scale this down a little bit. <laughs> Lucky number seven is done. This one was a challenge, but we got there. So many things coming up next. This particular course is important, and maybe that's why it was a challenge, because it's <laughs> going to be a, such a pivotal part in the build. Doesn't it seem like it's like that sometimes, like, you reach a certain point, and then it's like a hurdle you have to jump. And exactly. You, like, reach the next level. It's like we're not going to give this one to you easily. <laughs> So for sure I know that uh, that I gotta put a window form in here, right about here. So that's coming up next. I'm gonna build the window form, install it. I think we got some electrical stuff we need to do too, right? 
That's gonna be cool though. I think yeah. the house is really taking shape. You're gonna see kind of how it's all gonna come together. It'll start to look even more like a house once this window form is in yep. and it's some of this electrical stuff in. So I'm really excited and I hope you guys are too. So I mean, if you are, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss any of this. Ah! <laughs> all right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.